It came pretty close to the wire, but Labor got two of its three big pieces of legislation across the line, with the Safeguard Mechanism and National Reconstruction Fund both passing the Parliament, give or take a few tweaks. Those uh, opposite uh, actually have an opportunity to participate in debate but instead they choose to be observers. Both were election commitments and both needed a bit of fancy footwork from the ministers involved to get the Senate crossbench on board. In spite of the fact we clearly went to an election, two of these three policies were announced as part of budget replies. After the coalition said no on the safeguard mechanism, Chris Bowen could only negotiate with the Greens and crossbench to get the emissions trading scheme through the parliament. What the parliament has done today is draw an end to 10 years of dysfunction and 10 years of delay. Which is how we got a hard cap on pollution built into the legislation. The Greens have secured a big hit on coal and gas. The coalition, which said no almost as soon as the bill was introduced and played no role in the negotiations, was furious with the outcome of those negotiations and made sure everyone knew it. This is not a policy to decarbonise the Australian economy, but to decapitate the Australian economy. Order. The Coalition was also unimpressed with the National Reconstruction Fund passing which Ed Husick got across the line with the Greens and Crossbench after the Coalition said no at the outset. This is a highly cynical bill that I think reeks of left-wing uh, policies and politics instead of being a genuine nation-building uh, policy and program. The $15 billion co-investment fund is designed to kickstart Australia's manufacturing supply chains and won the green support after the government agreed it couldn't be used for coal or gas projects. Once again, the coalition was proclaiming doom and gloom over a policy it could have had input in but chose not to. The Coalition will be opposing this bill as amended by the Senate. The no and moan strategy appears to be catching on. Labor has been left to negotiate with, you guessed it, the Greens and Crossbench after, yep, the Coalition said no to its third big policy for this quarter, the Housing Future Fund. If people think that it's a great idea to say that they support more investment in social housing but knock back a $10 billion fund that will build more social and affordable housing, then good luck having that argument. And I'm quite happy to have that argument uh, between now and the next election. Out of all the policies, this is the one that Labor thought would be the easiest to pass. As election promises go, putting $10 billion in an account and then using the dividends from that fund to build 30,000 social and affordable houses over five years seems pretty innocuous. It's just absurd to vote for zero Order. rather than to vote for progress. The Housing Australia Future Fund is on top of the Housing Accord. It's on top of the Commonwealth State Housing Agreement. It was an election promise and part of that small target strategy that Labor took to the polls, promising a Labor value, secure housing, with a Liberal payment plan, a self-contained payment policy. So what's the hold-up? Because as policies go, it should be safe as houses, right? Labor's approach doesn't even touch the sides of the housing crisis. Rents have gone up seven times faster than wages. People are really struggling. And there's nothing in this package that is going to make life easier for renters. With the coalition locked into no and moan, Julie Collins has had to convince the Greens and senators like Lydia Thorpe and David Pocock. And it's not that they don't like the policy, it's that they don't think it goes far enough. Let's compare the $10 billion uh, off-budget fund uh, that will hopefully return $500 million to what the government spends subsidising investment properties through generous tax concessions. 30,000 homes over five years isn't a huge amount when there are more than 160,000 people on public housing waiting lists. Add in housing insecurity, a generation that's been locked out of the housing market, growing poverty and increasing concerns for older renters. And 30,000 homes over five years doesn't even touch the surface. This fund will, will take time to build the number of homes that are needed, but it's a bloody good start and the Greens should get behind it. And so the bill has stalled. The government admitted it wouldn't be getting it past the Senate before the budget and it was taken off the list. Negotiations are ongoing, but so far, neither side is budging. People are doing it tough at the moment and renters have basically been ignored. Will you show the same level of urgency 
and organise a national rent freeze. He knows that that is not possible. He knows it's not real. The government says it's a start, not a full stop. The Greens and Senators Thorpe and Pocock say it's barely a start. And if the government is going to do something, it should do it right. They've got this dodgy housing bill that I believe is a form of gambling, investing some money and hoping for a return to build public housing. What a joke. The coalition is saying nothing because it dealt itself out again. They just come in here and vote no, 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 no to everything, which is why they get so upset when I say they're the no illusion. What should have been one of the easiest policies to get across the line has become one of the most difficult because the government has butted up against a progressive Senate. The medical research fund is 20 billion. I'm saying let's, let's have more ambition. This is a huge issue across the country. It wants the government to do more and Labor, still wary over past scare campaigns, doesn't want to step too close over that centre line. And so we're at an impasse. But the other thing about this Senate, it wants to do the work. And this government has enough members from the 43rd hung parliament where it never lost a vote to know how to bend to a certain degree. And hopefully that will mean better policy outcomes, or at the very least, it'll give the coalition something else to know and moan over.